Live from the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California, it's theCUBE, covering DevNet Create 2018. Brought to you by Cisco. Hey, welcome back everyone. Live here in Silicon Valley at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California. We're here for Cisco's DevNet Create. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Lauren Cooney. Our next guest is Sylvain Kalechi, who's the co-founder of Holberton School. Um, in the news today for big venture fund funding, eight and a half million dollars, congratulations. Thank Welcome you. to theCUBE. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. We've, we've had many conversations with some of the folks you work with uh, at, at your place there. Really great mission. Um, uh, Cloud Now Awards have been on, Open Source Summit. Uh, you guys have a very special mission, certainly recognized with some good funding. Congratulations, but take a minute to explain the mission um, of your school. Yeah, so the mission of, of the school is to provide high quality education to the most. Uh, I think that's something that is uh, very tough in the US for American people is that um, there is high quality education and you know, like Ivy League are like obviously doing a great job, but the, the issue with that is that it's, it's like limited to an elite, but a fraction of American people can access high quality education. And so um, when you look at the student debt, you know, $1.4 trillion, um, like something is wrong with that, right? Yeah. And um, and so we we want to to be a part of the solution, and uh, that's why we created Holberton School. And the interesting thing too about it is, is that what I like about your mission too is, is that you're very transparent about what you do, and but a lot of the jobs are skills that not a lot of people have, so it's a first time skill. So. You know, as people look to hire, say, a data scientist or someone in AI or someone in machine learning or anything in tech, for instance, no one really has that many years of experience. Yeah. So there's an opportunity to level up for someone who might not have gone to a fancy school. Exactly, so today there is more than half a million unfilled jobs that require tech skills in the US, right? And according to the um, previous White House CTO, it's going to grow to 1.4 million in the next decade, right? Um, and um, universities are only going to train 400,000. So there is a, a gap of a million um, skilled people within the next 10 years um, for software engineering type of job, right? So um, my co-founder with Julian Barbier, who used to be uh, head of marketing and community, and I, who, uh, I used to work for LinkedIn, would uh, you know, interview a lot of people who wanted to um, you know, work for Docker on LinkedIn. And, and one of the issues we saw is that a lot of um, out of colleges uh, um, candidates would not be ready to take on a job. They were, they were not ready. You could see they were smarter than new things, but you would need to train them for six months or a year to, to get them ready to take on a job. What right? makes you different? What are you guys doing that's working? Can you explain the model? Yeah, so um, in regular education, uh, we bring you the knowledge, right? Uh, through a lecture, a uh, teacher will lecture you, right? And two weeks down the road, we'll um, give you the exam to see if you memorize, you know, like the solution, kind of, right? At Holberton, we, f we flip the education. We give students the exam through a project, and they have to go acquire the knowledge, learn the tools that they need to solve the thing, right? Which is pretty much what we do in the workplace, yeah. right? Like, my manager at LinkedIn would come to me and say, hey, Sylvain, you need to build this, you need to fix that, right? And then I'm paid to like, find the best solution, right? So we train our students the same way, right? And our yeah. students uh, come from all walks of life. Uh, right out of high school, some started college, didn't finish. Some used to be barista, poker play, uh, player, guitar player, artist, teacher, mm -hmm. all over the place, right? They come with no software engineering knowledge, and we train them uh, from zero uh, to, for two things. First one, to learn a craft that's in demand to get software engineering so that they can find a job um, you know, after graduation. And second, to learn how to learn, to develop problem solving skills, critical thinking, so that they can continue to grow e even after graduation and continue to learn and adapt, right? Is there a requirement? Um, the requirement is that you have to be over 18 years old. That's it. That's it. And that's what, it. Is, what does it cost? So the cost is none until you Great. find a job, right? Until so you find a job, and then what happens? So when, what happens if you find a job that's over $40,000 per year, then you contribute back to the school with a percentage of your salary. So we align the school success with student success. And the, contribution, the financial contribution that students make to the school is used to finance the next generation of students. Great. So that's like, you know, like an organic circle where 
um, the more students are successful, the, the more we can train um, you know, mm -hmm. other students. Yeah, you're investing in the outcome of well, the student. Exactly, we are, we are investing in our students while they are at the school, but obviously we are like investing in their success. That's, yeah. that's, that's the great. only way for us to succeed. Well, you're certainly optimized for success because you're motivated to do it right, right? So this is interesting. We are, and we are, and when we say we, it's like um, the whole Berton staff, but also the whole Berton community, which is composed of more than 150 mentors who are professional in the tech industry. And they are here for two things, to guide students to enter the tech industry. They come to the school, share their experience, what's like to work for a startup, what's like to work yeah. for a big company, what's like to be a woman in tech, right? And also the guidance on the curriculum, right? To make sure that what yeah. is being taught is like always relevant. And, and that works, students find yeah. jobs in Silicon Valley companies, including Tesla, Apple, NASA, LinkedIn, yeah. you name it. So they are competing with Ivy League type of talent, yeah, yeah. but they are definitely yeah. not the type of yeah. demographic that usually And they might, they actually might win too because they have the street smarts and they get the hands-on skills. Okay, so quick question. So f is it the for-profit or non-profit? It's for-profit. Okay, so it's for-profit, but it's, yeah. it's, it's got a mission-driven initiative yes. tied to a profit objective. So you just raised some funding. Yeah. Um, how did that go? Is that use of funds going to be to expand the scope or student body? I'm sure there's some constraints in terms of how much you can handle in terms of student body locations around the world. What is there an expansion strategy? Obviously you got you know, some funding. Yeah, what so, are you going to do with yeah. that? So we are a San, Fr San Francisco Bay School. We started two years ago with uh, our first cohort of 30 students. And with the location we had, we could train 100 students a year, right? Um, that's good, but in the grand schema of things, it's not a lot, It's a right? prototype. Yeah, it's a prototype, exactly. So um, now that you know, we have these students working for NVIDIA, Dropbox, Apple, and like, you know, the Google of the world. We're like, okay, like now we need to scale up, and we move to a new location uh, that's seven times bigger, uh, where we'll be able to train 500 students per year, which, because it's a two-year program, will be a campus of a thousand students, right? And to give you an idea of the scale, the, the largest university for CS uh, students in the US is tra training 700 students per year, so we are like, quickly coming up as like one of the largest um, trainer of, of computer phenomenal. science students. What's the curriculum? Is it mostly computer science? Is it mostly tech? I mean, obviously you have, um, I'd say anyone who could come in, but you do have a women in tech and you have a uh, underrepresented minority kind of component, which is great, um, but it's open to anyone. It's open to anyone over 18. The application process is uh, blind and fully automated. So there is no human selection. No discrimination of any kind. No discrimination. Um, and and yes. how do you cut? How do you cut people off? Is it um, random? Like a, it's not random. <laughs> it's not random. I mean, yeah. like I mean, if you have a, say hundred, five hundred spots, yeah. and you have a thousand applicants, yeah. So do you so, sort it. Is it like the, right. you, know, you get the lottery? I mean, is it no? So there is only three percent of students who start the application process who make it. Okay, got it. Uh, so there is a selection criteria. There is a selection criteria. It's hard to get in. Uh, it's mostly based on uh, motivation and talent. And by talent, we mean uh, this ability to thrive in this type of environment where you learn by doing and you learn by collaborating uh, with your peers, which is something that not everybody you know, is suited to. Do. So you identify success criteria, what you think might be aligned with the culture of the curriculum. Yeah, we, we believe that grit uh, is uh, you know, a big element in, in people's yeah. success. And I think there is a lot of American people with grit but they born in the wrong zip yeah. code, they didn't have the right family, you know, we yeah. could support them. And yeah. to us, we don't want to select um, people because of their past, but we want to select people because of who they are. Ultimately, the application process is doing this for us. And in terms of numbers, uh, so far it brought 35% women, 50% uh, of our students are non-white, and the age goes anywhere from 17 to 56. Uh, so it's like a very diverse crowd of students uh, who like makes this community like really amazing. Yeah, someone from someone coming from someone who paid for their own college uh, and then had to pay it all back. <laughs> I would have loved to have this around when I was going through school. Oh, you still so, paid it back. I mean, I it's like you want it up front for free. Yeah. So what percentage of the salary is it? I mean, can you talk about numbers or is yeah. it? I mean, because that's always some people want to know the math in, in advance. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, it's 17% uh, of your income for the first three years of employment. Uh, if you find a job, that's over 40,000. So if you don't find a job, then you don't, you don't pay yeah. anything. And direct deposit probably mostly, do they have to be obligated to pay you? Do they usually do? 
direct deposit? Yeah, we, we partner with like a third, third party that's uh, taking care of this, and it's basically like a monthly, uh, you know, deposit. So it's automated for the for this candidate for the yeah, it's student. Yeah, it's automated. Yeah. And right. you do you do partnerships in any way? So like you know, women that are re-entering the workforce or you know, things along those lines. There's a lot of different programs out there that support, Abs you know. Yeah, absolutely, so we are partnering with a lot of organizations. Okay. We want to inspire um, underrepresented, um, you know, like demographic to mm -hmm. um, believe that they can become software engineers. That can, they can be part of that, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so we partner, one of them is uh, CloudNow, uh, yep. With uh, Jocelyn, uh, which I've won yeah. an award, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, and, yeah. And she was on the cube, uh, yep. and we, and we cover their great. events. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so with Jocelyn, we worked on um, fundraising uh, for uh, women for living stipend uh, from Google, Accenture, um, and uh, Scality, and um, and yeah, we were able to uh, you know like help more students to get in the program. Um, and great. also one thing that we are doing is that we have a board of trustees uh, where actually Jocelyn is sitting. We have also the uh, Singer Grammy Award winner, Neo, um, who help us to make sure that we are doing everything we can uh, to communicate to these minorities, yeah. right? Um, and as Neo says, like, like, the, lit, like the, the kid in, in, in the hood will come up with like a different set of problems and different set of ideas on how to build product and solve yeah. issues. And not only having a diverse workforce is socially good, but it also makes sense business-wise because your customer base is diverse by definition, yeah. right? I mean, so the, it, the, you need to have the algorithms that, see the algorithms are being written by only a small percentage of the population. Yeah. Yeah. They're inherently biased. They are. So we need to have that diversity uh, and plus, diversity brings more unique perspectives. It might slow things down a bit, but you're going to get a much more broader representation. It is. I mean, and we heard that with Mark Zuckerberg in front of the Senate <laughs> yesterday. You know, <laughs> the question is like, you know, there's biases in there. Who's writing the algorithms? Yeah, it's it become even worse with uh, AI and machine learning, uh, where if you feed this intelligence a data set that's biased or discriminative, then the AI will behave yeah. like. With discrimination. With the and they're hidden bias, so people might not even know that they're biased. Mm -hmm. It's built exactly. in. So it's, it's yeah. terrible, like the average number of women in the tech industry in the valley is 12%. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we really, and it's also bad for um, like, you know, ethnicity, but also I would say non-visual diversity, yeah. right? Like what zip code, what background, what like academic background you come from. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a group think mentality. Oh, we went to Harvard. Oh, you're instantly funded. Exactly. I mean, that was the old way. The new way is a new generation. You're doing amazing work. We applaud your mission and success. We think this is the model. In fact, I'm even more aggressive and think you should get tax deductions <laughs> for contributing your time to the school, mm -hmm. and the students should get a tax deduction off the payment. This is a very scalable model. Congratulations. You should propose that. Get well, Zuckerberg's in in, in, in Washington D.C. You gotta phone send in. To us. Yeah, send, <laughs> some, send us some text messages. Hey, while you're there, change the regulations. Hey, thanks for coming on. Thank you very Paul much. Paul Check it out. Great mission. Uh, changing the the education paradigm, bringing a new paradigm for learning. Really filling the, the gap on the jobs front uh, across the world. It's the cube. Of course, doing our part, sharing it with you. Back with more live coverage here at Cisco DevNet Create at the Computer History Museum. We'll be right back. <laughs>